Welcome to Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library that's all about books. Each episode, we answer one book-related question in just a few minutes. This time, we're talking about our literary guilty pleasures. I'm Christopher, and I'm joined by Amanda and Lucy. Lucy, what do you have for us today? Um, well, I struggled with this one a little bit because truthfully, I, I try not to feel guilty about reading. And I think some of, I was thinking about that. And I think some of it is, you know, when you're, when you're a kid, if you love reading, like you just get immersed in, or I did anything I could get my hands on that had words in it. I just was in there and I loved it. And I loved that feeling of like leaving my world behind and going into that new world. And I think as an adult, you don't really get to do that as much. And so I think for me, where the guilt comes from is like, taking the time to read something. That's my, you know. So um, what I thought of is when this whole pandemic started and everything closed and I was at home and I, I couldn't focus on what I wanted to read and I just wanted that feeling. I wanted to be immersed in that world. But I was like, oh, I have this really long reading list. Should I take time away from it? So I went through the boxes of kids' books and um, I pulled out all of the old, the Raina Telgemeier graphic novels that my kids had loved so much. And I'd read a couple of them. And so I started and I just, it was as I thought it would be. I just fell into them in a way that I think for me, like sometimes only a graphic novel can provide. And the stories are so good in these. And then I just went on this binge of like, there's some, there's some really great, um, like Roller Girl was one of my favorite middle grade graphic novels. Um, I have, I mean, I have a stack here. Sunny Side Up was really good. And this is what I, I just was like, sorry, can't talk. I got to go to my world. And um, it, I loved it. And, but I took a lot of time doing it. It was just like this project I created for myself. And I don't know what fell by the wayside while I was doing it, but that's maybe where the guilt came in for me. So um that would be my guilty pleasure read is middle grade graphic novels because I can't do anything else when I'm in the world that they provide. So, uh, Amanda, what did you choose? Well, I loved hearing how you were trying to define or figure out what was a guilty pleasure for you. I kind of had the same problem because right now, whatever I read, I read whatever I want. Like I have no guilt in the time I spend on it or what I'm reading, like some people might think, oh, I can't read a kid's book, it's a kid's book. Or they might be like, oh, I'm reading a kid's book right now. Like me, I read tons of kid's books. I read tons of teen books. I read graphic novels. I read across genres. Um, so I was trying to think of things that might be a little different or things that not a lot of people would want to maybe admit to be reading currently as an adult. Um, so I decided to go back to some things that I read when I was younger that I, like Lucy did, I reintroduced myself to them last summer. I grabbed a book by um, Christopher Pike. He re he writes um, youth books and a lot of teen books that are um, horror, thriller, some sci-fi. Um, he has a smattering of titles. We've got a few in our collection. And then also R.L. Stein. R.L. Stein is another one. It's in the same vein. He's sort of like the Stephen King of kids literature, they say. Um, but again, like horror, he, R.L. Stein is the one who wrote the Goosebumps series and he wrote the Fear Street series. Um, Goosebumps is more for kids and Fear Street is for teens. I read more of the teen or the Fear Street series. I actually will admit right now that I've never read a Goosebumps book, but after gathering my notes for the show today and figuring out what I wanted to talk about, I need to read a Goosebumps book. Um, there's a book that the library has I wanna read. It's a youth biography by R.L. Stein called It Came From Ohio which I thought would be a fun way to be introduced or reconnected with the author and then grab one of his Goosebumps books. Um, but like I said, I've read some Fear Street stuff. And then for Christopher Pike, he's got several, and again, they're horror, they're campy, um, they're teen based, and they're just like sort of like little indulgences. Um, and for me, like I read a lot of that stuff like in the late eighties, in the early nineties, like middle school, high school. And that's just what I was reading. You know, if it wasn't Babysitter's Club, I was moving into these like more horror thriller type genres. So for me, I thought, eh, that's what I'll talk about today. So if you want, want to just read something that's horror that maybe you read horror now and didn't read those when you were younger I feel like a lot of people who read horror or thrillers now sort of grew up on those kinds of books um maybe I feel like more girls read Christopher Pike than boys in middle school 
in high school. I can't be sure in that, but I feel like more girls I know were reading like Christopher Pike at that time period. Um, but for me, that was sort of a starter to get into Stephen King and some other like horror stuff. But anyway, so that's my guilty pleasure. It's just going back and reading some things that I enjoyed when I was younger that led me to reading more adult fiction. So grab a book by Christopher Pike, R.L. Stein, go down that hole. And if you haven't read a Goosebumps book, do the challenge with me, grab one, read one. I don't know which one to read. If you have a good one for me to start with, please let me know in the comments because I'm gonna have to find the one I wanna read. <laughs> Um, so Christopher, that's my, my wacky story for a guilty pleasure. What makes you feel guilty with reading? <laughs> well, uh, I really enjoyed hearing how you've both defined a guilty pleasure. I guess when I think of a guilty pleasure, it's something that I don't necessarily want to admit to other people that I have enjoyed reading. So when I was finishing college, a friend introduced me to Charles Bukowski, and I really enjoyed his poetry a lot. Um, he talks a lot about a very solitary life and he leads a kind of transgressive life in certain ways. His poetry is very accessible. I wouldn't say that it's really multi-layered or um, really that deep. It's pretty uh, on the surface, I would say. But I don't often admit to having enjoyed a lot of his books of poetry because he is really considered to be a very sexist writer um, and probably has a lot of terrible qualities. Uh, but a lot of his poetry is very, very beautiful. And some of his collection, uh, some of his titles really have stuck with me all these years, like The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. Even the title is beautiful. Um, and we have a Michigan connection with Charles Bukowski. When Black Sparrow, his publishing company, went out of business, Western Michigan bought the whole archive. So that's here in Michigan, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, Charles Bukowski poetry is my guilty pleasure. And up next, we have uh, one of our favorite hobby books that we're going to be talking about. It could be any kind of hobby at all, and we're going to be talking all about it. So join us then. Thanks a lot. <laughs>